Once upon a time, on a Saturday morning it was, there lived a Baron Harper and his three daughters, Ubala, Bubala, and Bootsarella. Ubala and Bubala were rather ugly, and they were very rotten to Bootsarella. And it wasn't because she was better looking than them. As a matter of fact, she was uglier. When you looked at her from the outside, her head was too big for her body, and her feet were all lumpy. But from the inside, oh, she was a different person altogether. Warm and winsome and cheery. Her ugly sisters made it all the work, scrubbing and cleaning and taking out the cinders. Sometimes they called her cinders. Well, on this Saturday morning I'm telling you about, it was a lovely morning. It was the crack of dawn, and the birds were just getting up, and so was Bootsarella. Oh, here, hark at them. Oh, please. <laughs> They only did that because they liked her. She always gave them bits of bread and great dollops of custard. She used to buy them bird seed out of her pocket money. But while Bootsarella was doing all the work in the house, the two sisters were just laying about practicing pulling faces in the mirror. Although, mind you, the faces they pulled were better than the ones they had to start with. Bootsarella used to call them bear's breath and droopy jaws, and they were always on at her. Oh, said bear's breath. Who's pinched my beauty spot, eh? No, I haven't pinched it. Yes, oh she has, said Droopy Draws. Look, oh look, there it is, there, on the end of her ooter. No, it isn't. It's a bit of soot that come down the chimney. Bootsarella went to run away. A bear's breath caught her and give her one. And Bootsarella thought, one of these days, I'll give them one, I will. I'll give them one each, and when I get my wild up, I'm fed up with my life, I am. I'd be better off out of it. Oh, I, I do wish a handsome prince would come along and get hold of me and make mine his. But he won't, and I can't because I'm so uncouth and all listless with it. So time went on, and they all grew a little uglier each day, and the more they take it out on poor Bootsarella. Baron Harder was kind enough but he couldn't do anything with the two stepsisters. Well, one day, Bootsarella was out in the woods collecting firewood when she came upon an old crone crooning to herself and muttering and all. Mm -hmm. Oh, good morning, Bootsarella. <laughs> oh, good morning, missus. How do you know my name? Ah, I know many things, many things. But a lack Alack, I don't know where to find any firewood. <laughs> I must find some sticks or I shall freeze tonight. Then Bootsarella thought, oh, the poor thing. Here, you can have my sticks. I'll collect some more. Oh, you're very kind, Bootsarella. Oh, leave them. Here, go and take them. Here, can I help you cross the road? But here, in the middle of the forest, there is no road. Yeah, I know, but it's the thought that counts, isn't it? And Bootsarella went off to collect some more firewood, and on the way, in the wood, she came to a clearing, and there was a crowd of young lads all larking about, and one of them was all handsome and tall and smiling. One look, and Bootsarella fell in love with him. She didn't know that he was a prince, but he was. Prince Albert. And these blokes were discussing the dance they were going to that night. There was going to be a running buffet with sandwiches and light refreshments and a twist competition and everything. When Bootsarella heard all this, she wanted to go, but she couldn't very well invite herself. So she sat in the bushes on her reticule, hiding when suddenly, out of the woods, all growling and showing its teeth and all ferocious, came, what do you think it was? No, it wasn't one of the ugly sisters. It was a bear. All the young lads started to run away when they saw the bear, but Prince Albert tripped over a tree stump and lay there, stunned on him. The bear was just about to get hold of him when Bootsarella went to the rescue. She knew all the animals in the forest especially this one, as she'd taken a thorn out of his paw the year before, and they've had a nodding acquaintance ever since. Bruno, what are you doing of? Um, I'm going to eat him. I'm hungry. <laughs> what are you on about? 
Bears don't eat people, only vegetables and honey and buns. You're not a carnivorous animal. You're omnivorous. Yes, but I fancy him. I do, I fancy him. Yes, so do I, but that's no reason to eat him. Yes, but I'm hungry. Bootsarella produced a pot of honey from her reticule and gave it to the bear. Now go on, hop it, or I'll give you a good hiding all over. So the bear went off with the honey, and Prince Albert stood up again. Hello, who are you? I'm Bootsarella. Oh, how can I ever repay you? I know, we're having a ball tonight. Uh, you must come and be the guest of honor. Oh, thanks very much, but you see, there's my family, I mean... Oh, they can come as well. I'll send invitations at once. Play God for Harry, England, and St. George. And off he went. When Bootsarella got home, she found her sisters all trembling with the thought of going to the ball. Oh, quick, oh, quick. Who's got my three and eleven three stockings I just bought all seamless? My uh, high buckle shoes. Where are they? Who's pinched them? Where's my mantilla gone? They soon had Bootsarella running about in all directions, but when she shyly told them that she too was going to the ball, they laughed at her and poured scorn on her and sneeringly tore up her invitation. You can stay here tonight and look after the house, they said. We're not going to any dance with you. Look at you. You look a right scruff, and your feet are all bent. Dances are for smart people like us. And off they went, smelling of eau de cologne. Poor Bootsarella sat in the kitchen all miserable. Tears rolled down her face and splashed into the fire. Then there was a knock on the door. Who's there? And in walked the old crone from the woods. Oh... Hello, missus. What do you want, then? I have come to return your kindness. <laughs> oh, Edgar, well, it's all right. I don't want my sticks back. No, no, it's not that. <laughs> yeah, what was that? The whole kitchen seemed to be filled with thunder and lightning and the old crone had changed herself into a fairy. Oh, here, look what's happened to you, missus. I am your fairy godmother. I pretended to be an old crone. Now it's my turn to help you. Well, you see, I want to go to the dance tonight, but, but I can't. Well, I haven't got anything to wear. It's too far to walk, and besides, they tore up my invitation. Nothing is impossible to a fairy. Now, wrap the tablecloth round you. So Bootsarella did. Put that tea cosy on your head. So she did. Hang that string of onions round your neck. So Bootsarella did that as well. And then she burst out crying. What's the matter now? It's these onions. The vapors tend to get up my apples. Oh, dear. Then she waved a magic wand. And Bootsarella stood there transfigured. The tablecloth had turned into a robe, the onions into a great golden necklace, and the tea cosy had turned into a tiara. You can go to the ball as the Princess Crystal. What on my bike? Fetch me a pumpkin, four mace, and two lizards. Are you feeling hungry? Do as I say. So Bootsarella got the pumpkin and the other things, and with a quick wave of the wand, the fairy transformed them into a coach, horses and footmen. Off you go to the ball, but beware. The spell only lasts till midnight. Well, Bootsarella promised to be back by midnight, and she went off to the ball. She had a wonderful time, dancing with the prince, and drinking onion squash and being rude to her sisters, because no one recognized her. In fact, she enjoyed herself so much she clean forgot the time. Or oh, I should be home. There she was, dressed in rags again. Where are you going? said the prince. But Bootsarella had fled, 
the only thing left to show she'd been there at all was one plimsoll which had come off as she'd run away. And the next day, a proclamation was read out which said that Prince Albert would marry the owner of the plimsoll. Naturally, every woman in the kingdom claimed the plimsoll was hers, but when they tried it on, it was obvious that the plimsoll would only fit a very peculiar foot. Bear's breath tried it, but it was too small. Oh, blast! Droopy Draws tried it, but it was too big. Oh, drat! The prince was heartbroken. His princess, that's how he thought of Bootsarella, had vanished. But then at last, Bootsarella plucked up courage and admitted the plimsoll was hers. She tried it on and it fitted. And Bootsarella fell into his arms in a light swoon from the ecstasy of it. And they got married and the fairy godmother came to stay with them. And Bootsarella went into the firewood business with her and they all lived weirdly ever after. So nowadays, when you see a little horse and cart coming down the street, and the man on it shouting, I with her! I with her! Take a good look at him, because that man might be the great, 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 great grandson of Bootsarella and Prince Albert. And then again, he might not. <laughs>